Hi there and welcome back to Japan and to our reaction and review to the latest song by the band Dreamcatcher called No More. As always, this is the review video. If you want to see the reaction that I've just done, pause this, click the little link in the description below and it'll open up a separate little YouTube player so you can watch that. Just in case you haven't heard the song, I want to see how I reacted up on first listen. Now, just having finished listening to it, I'm ready to give you a review. So here we go. Remember, pause this while I drink this coffee if you want to see the video first. Review time. Okay, so this was um, kind of an interesting one because I obviously I'm responding to this a little bit later than expected because I was away doing this trip around Japan in December and also because of New Year and Christmas and everything getting in the way. But this was one I was really looking forward to. And one of the primary reasons is because you guys had described this to me as basically being um, them stepping further into this one particular direction they've been going seemingly for the Japanese market. Now, what I particularly like about them is that they were a few things. I mean, one of the reasons we've stuck with them so long, despite them being a Korean group and us mainly being focused on Japanese music, is the fact that I do feel that they are quite different from a lot of their peers in that they seem to be, there seems to be uh, a focus more on being creative than necessarily just trying to bang out the hits. And like I said, a lot of these Korean groups are kind of doing, dare I say it, for risk of sounding a bit out of touch, but I think I've got a musical basis to say this, slightly samey tactics in a lot of their music. So it's very rare to hear a group from that K-pop uh, staple who are doing something really different. Um, and, you know, and I mean, from song to song, you know, I mean, having a varied sound. And these guys, if you look at the range of things they do from kind of very, very poppy stuff all the way to songs like this, the very rock, um, it really does give you an impression that creativity and trying to get fans who are genuinely music fans as well as, you know, nothing wrong with having a pop audience, but trying to get a real interesting uh, range of fans is clearly key to their um, interest. And I do think this also means that they probably have a better working environment. We've discussed this before. I know that a lot of groups, not just in Korea, but Korea seems to be at the hype of it, um, Pinnacle that have had some working conditions that have lead, led to some unfortunate instances. So I can't help but feel that these look like a happy group who are doing creative things. Great to see. So Getting back to this particular song, um, obviously we've seen them go in quite a few different directions, but obviously when it comes to the Japanese market, they're playing towards that heavier, um, there's the sort of thing that's quite popular in Japan over the last few years, the juxtaposition between, you know, various forms of rock, be it punk, metal, hard rock, and pop, you know, sort of girl group pop. Um, they're playing towards that a lot with the Japanese market, which seems to be a wise idea, and obviously gives them a nice counter to some of their more poppy stuff they do elsewhere. Although very little of what they do is straight pop since the Minx days. Um, now, what I particularly liked about this is obviously this is one where they are going very, very, very much for Let's Be Heavy. Um, and they had done that before with, uh, apologies, I always forget song names. I think it was Endless Night was the last really sort of hard one they did for the Japanese market. But this is actually very different from that in a lot of key ways. I felt that Endless Night was uh, very much a, it, it felt almost quite raw. It had that sort of raw rock sound. It was a kind of, I would say it more played into a hard rock slightly occasionally grungy punky area in the you know the drums really were hitting the guitars were quite growling there was a lot of that kind of grittiness to it this goes in a slightly more smooth direction reminds me a lot of what i would perhaps uh, reference to um a mixture of early and late era i guess you could say lincoln park style production you know there's a lot of compression all of the guitars and things were very loud but they were also smooth um the drums were very um sort of heavy and punchy but at the same time they weren't um they they felt very much under control they felt like there was a sort of solid rhythm going on there um rather than a sort of a charging urgent uh, urgent panicking rhythm um you know both are different things for they have their own good and bad so the question is did this work i think again it showed a variation i think even within their harder rock stylings that they're obviously playing within the japanese market they've done two songs that are now actually quite distinctly different not just musically but also in the style of production which is always very important when you've got groups like this who obviously at core they are you know they're using that pop style um, and they've got producers and writers working in the background doing the majority of the musical uh heavy lifting when it comes to you know creating what the song will be um they are performers at, at heart and it's nice to see that that variation is being played with it reminds me a lot of why i said things like baby metal have worked yes everything they do is kind of a mixture of pop and metal but they've really delved into every different way that you can do metal they've not been lazy and not just said all oh, we're just going to do 
hard rock four chord uh, stuff and, you know, then sing pop vocals over it and just rest on our laurels. This is what I'm feeling here. Um, for better or worse, whether people like it as much, um, obviously I don't believe they have like the, uh, they don't have the, uh, whether you think it's earned or not, the credibility that Babe Metal had from getting an, an actual band together in the background. Um, but when we just talk about music, I think that they're hitting a lot of those right notes that are working. And they come from a pop pedigree in that, you know, you can see, again, like Babe Metal, they're able to do the pop stuff when they need to, and the harder stuff, they're doing very well. So, um, yeah, a lot of this gives me a lot of hope that we're going to see some really interesting things. I'm glad that they haven't abandoned what they're doing on any real uh, area, any real area or style. Um, now, overall, musically, uh, as I said, a lot of what made this work for me was the juxtaposition between the fact that, okay, you've got the very anthemic style vocal melodies. The melody wasn't allowed to repeat too much. It did have nice little changes. You felt like the both the melody and the chord pattern um, never settled to the point of becoming repetitive. Always good. It's surprising how few writers think about that, but it's very easy when you've got a good thing to just repeat it too much. This felt like it was always kind of meandering in a sort of interesting way. It was finding its path. The melody was developing. The core palette was developing. The melody and kill pattern, though, like I say, were very sort of slow moving, mid tempo, and the beat underneath was what was moving really fast. Now, definitely hashtag no bias on this one. Um, but I, one of the things I really like about them is when I start listening to their songs, I always take in, oh, what's going to be the sound of this song? And I always forget that they, one of the key things they do to break it up, they do a lot of things to break up their songs most of the time. One of the key things they do to break it up is throwing in the little hip hop rap sections. And it's always a joy when they come along because, uh, like I say, compared to so many, it's always a difficult subject, and I've said this before, when you have uh, rap in pop music, you don't expect the same quality of rap delivery as you'd get from actual, you know, good quality rap. I'm not talking about trap or any of that kind of thing, but good quality rap music. You expect it to be higher quality delivery because that's all that it is. That's its core. In pop, you don't expect that same quality. But I think with them, the, the hip hop stuff they do is always really rhythmically interesting. The music really sort of moves around it and they really get a good beat. And this was another one. I love the rap break. It came, as always, from nowhere. I'm just not ready for it. I'm always just sort of enjoying where the song's going, and then bam, it appears usually in the second verse. Uh, also, another thing, nice that they do it in the second verse. They don't just always sort of throw it into the bridge, which I guess is more of a Western thing. But still, I like the way they do it. It breaks up the second verses as well. Um, this was another really good one. Nicely changed up the tempo, but fitted in perfectly. For a song that has a lot of compression and therefore is loud, loud, loud all the time, it also helped to sort of if you like, as I often say, wind back the spring a bit so you could punch forward again. Um, that was another good quality of it. Like I say, though, the compression thing is a difficult one because I appreciate, especially when you're going for something that you want to get radio play, compression is necessary. And I did a video about how compression works a while ago, how it can be good and bad on both ranges of the scales, but there's always too far in either direction. For me, this was the sort of thing that for a um, listening on headphones out and about, that sort of thing, it was, it was kind of all right. It was a bit heavy, but it was kind of about the right amount of compression to make it sound nice and loud and, you know, be really present in headphones. Listening in front of a computer in a more quiet room... Gotta admit, it felt just enough compression that in the choruses, at least, the choruses lost a bit of their impact. Um, you could tell that melodically in the way they were written, they had a lot of impact, but when it came in from the verses and the bridge, it just didn't feel like it had enough impact, especially because the drums felt a little bit squashed under just how big and grand the vocal melody and the guitar was, and those were two sort of lots of held notes there. The sounds were constant, there was no breaks in them. So the drum drums didn't really push through enough. I don't know whether a bit of EQ change or a bit more volume on the drums would have been a good idea, but I felt the beat was kind of... It was there, but I felt like I wanted a bit more of it um, to give a bit more punch and impact and a little bit more head bob for what was something that, like I say, was relying on a juxtaposition between a slow-moving anthemic style uh, melody and chord pattern and a very sort of kinetic um, beat that was what was basically giving it its rock cued us, even more so than the drums. Um, so more so than the guitar. So uh, for me, yeah, I, I felt like the compression was a little bit too much, but it didn't kill it. I think maybe on repeat listens, it will probably um, suck a bit of the song's uh, re-listenability away from it. But, you know, it wasn't bad. Um, wasn't, it well, wasn't critically bad, just wish there'd been a little bit less of it. Uh, overall though, like I say, They've done sort of more raw style rock, which I was quite surprised by. I guess this is more what I'd expect them to do if they were going to go heavy, heavy, heavy. But still, 
Nice to see them do it in a different way. This is a more produced style, heavy rock, heavy sort of metally rock, um, as well as doing the usual range of sort of uh, pop and more experimental mood based uh, pop rock orchestral crossovers that they're more uh, renowned for doing. Um, and also they've gotten into you know much more directly uh, pop stuff in some of the um, uh, less uh, single focus songs they've done. I mean things like Red Sun, for example, was a very um, there was no guitar in that at all. That was a very sort of uh, pop song, very sort of swingy pop song, a bit dark sounding, but again like that. But like I say, they've just done a lot of things, and I'm really impressed that I'm still hearing their songs, still hearing new things. This is like I say, one of the qualities that I don't expect groups to have. This I like a lot of groups who just have a sound and are very good at exploiting that one sound. But I have a soft spot for any group who can really go in lots of different directions. Like I say, I'm thinking of things like Babe Mel. I'm thinking of things like Bish. I'm thinking of things like um, coming to other styles of music, uh, things like Alia, um, where you just you don't know what you're going to get in each song. Um, and to me, that's like I say, that's a, a massive thing, especially when you're doing it. I think it has a special kudos when you're doing it in something where you've effectively got a pop group, where, you know, as it is a manufactured thing, profit is going to be more the concern than the artist's own need to express themselves. So the fact that they've decided that the way to get profit and the way to, which uh, let's be honest, as much as they enjoy what they're doing, that is the core thing the record company wants. The way to get profit and the way to be that, you know, be unique is by finding a creative voice. So, or at least a creative variation. So I am all for that. Anyway, as always, those are my thoughts. Please get in the comments. Tell me what you think. Looking forward to seeing what you guys think about this one. It's a really interesting one. I'm drinking a coffee over the handle. That's a bit weird. <laughs> so as always, like I say, tell me what you guys think in the comments. As always, likes and subscribes are greatly appreciated. Follow any of the social medias. Links in the description below if you want to do more talking about Japanese and any music, really, with our many followers. Um, trying to really develop the Reddit. It's a great place to have conversations, but I know not many people have Reddit. Trying to get more people on there because it's, like I say, a good area to build up topics. But our Discord's very active and always posting things on, like, Facebook and Twitter. And as always, a massive thank you to the Patreon supporters who do keep this whole ship afloat. You really do. So massive thank you to you and until i see you at the end well you're at the end of this video until i see you in the next video <laughs> from here in japan for now ciao ciao <laughs>